Hello and welcome to another video tutorial for the Lightroom Learning Group. Now in today's tutorial, I just wanted to quickly go over the recent addition of profiles to Adobe Lightroom. Now profiles are best described as the base or the foundation of your image. Every image has a profile. Your camera can set a profile for you. Um, Lightroom can set a profile for you. Photoshop can set a profile for you. Camera Raw can set a profile for you. At some point in time, your image will have a profile on it. Now, profiles have always been included in Lightroom. However, they have been very minimal and they have been hidden, I believe, in the camera calibration panel previously, and they were not widely used. However, uh, Adobe recently released a slew of new profiles to give your images a different look just by using the profiles. You can think of them somewhat as presets, but Better. So they are better because you don't have to adjust any of the sliders in your image. Simply using a profile is going to tell Lightroom how to interpret the values in the image as they are without using sliders, without using um, different, uh, different adjustments. All right. So it's just a, a slightly better way to start your image off. Now, to find the profiles in Lightroom Classic CC, all you have to do is go to the Develop module, and now in the Basic panel, you have them located right here. It says Profile. In this case, I am in Adobe Standard because that is the default when you import into Lightroom. And then if you go over here, you can tap on that little grid there, and that will pop up this Profile Browser. Now you can see here you have a list of profiles that are going to have different, um, different profiles within them. We have favorites, which are profiles that you select as your favorites, camera raw profiles, camera matching profiles, legacy profiles, artistic profiles, black and white profiles, modern profiles, vintage profiles. So you have just tons of profiles. And of course, next to each name of category, there is the number of profiles held within that um, that folder, if you will. Now, Adobe Raw, we can just open that real quick, and you can see that you have the seven basic Adobe Raw profiles. And I say basic because these are just kind of the standards that have been with Camera Raw for a number of years. Um, the default, again, is going to be Adobe Standard. And anytime that you import into Lightroom, you're going to be using Adobe Standard unless you tell it otherwise. We can go down here and we can see that we have five camera matching profiles. And these are the profiles that are within my own camera. I shoot Nikon. My particular Nikon has um, a profile for landscape, neutral, portrait, standard, and vivid. All right, I will generally shoot either in landscape or neutral. And now you might be asking yourself, well, why would you set a profile in your camera if Lightroom is just going to set the profile for you when you import? That's a good question. My answer is very simply this. I choose to shoot usually landscape because that's going to be the closest profile to the final output of my image. I know that when I create an image, I'm a very long ways away from the output stage of that image. However, if I want to look at that image, um, in a preview type of fashion, I know that the landscape profile of my camera is going to give me the closest iteration of that image. And I also know that this profile will likely later be changed, and that's okay. I'm simply looking for a preview of the image um, in, a, in a scenario where I'm not yet to Lightroom. So that's why I may have a, uh, a profile set in my camera that's going to be something more dramatic, such as landscape versus neutral. Now, moving on, we have legacy, and these are just some old black and white legacy profiles that have been with Adobe for a number of years, and they just continue to include them. I'm not entirely sure why. i go ahead and close some of these so we get a little bit more screen space. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, moving on, we have artistic, black and white, modern, and vintage. Now, all of these down here are going to have an adjustment slider on them. The profiles up here in raw, matching, and legacy, they're not going to have 
a, a slider on them. And by that, what I mean is the effect slider. So I'll go ahead and I'll just select artistic one. And now you can see that I get this slider right up here. And that's going to allow me to show a different amount of this profile. So if I take it down, well, it's going to remove the effect all the way down to no effect occurring at all. And if I take it all the way up, well, I can have 200% essentially of this profile taking place. Of course, the default is going to be 100. Now, if I go into Adobe Raw and I click Adobe Color, well, there you go. See that slider went away. You can't adjust the effect or the amount of Adobe Color, all right, because it just simply is what it is. But if you're in any of these artistic profiles down here, um, under artistic or B and W, modern or vintage, then you will in fact get that amount slider, and that can be very helpful. So, in this image, for example, if I kind of liked this look here, um, it's uh, got a bit of a yellow filter on there, but I like the way it kind of makes the greens look. Well, I can go up here and I can say, yeah, I like it, but just not quite that much. So I'll take it down a little bit. There we're at 66% of the amount taking place. And I think that looks pretty good. And that's a good place to start. So let's start with that. So there you go. That's how you use these profiles. And it's very, very helpful. You have just now a whole slew of profiles that you can use. And a lot of these are gonna look somewhat familiar to you if you've used Instagram because that's essentially what you're doing is you're putting on a bit of a filter again though it's going to be better than a filter because what you're doing is you're telling Lightroom how to interpret the values in your image you're not changing the pixels or the appearance of the pixels at all you're just changing the values at the very basic data level of your image so it's a very uh, useful and powerful thing using these profiles. Now another benefit of these profiles aside from having a very good strong foundation to build your image off of is that you can use them in um, again Lightroom, Lightroom Mobile, Photoshop, and Camera Raw and they're going to be very important when you're using Adobe Lightroom Mobile and I say that because what you can do is if you have all of your collections synced, which hopefully you do, and that's something that we will get into later, but you can then add a profile to your image, share that to Instagram. You don't have to use any of their filters. You don't have to degrade your image using their filters. And then you can repeat that look over and over again. So, you know, for example, if you have an image that you want to share to Instagram and then you put a filter on it in Instagram, and you have somebody comments on, oh, I want to buy this image. It's beautiful. It's amazing. I'm going to give you a million dollars to hang it on my wall. Well, how do you repeat that? It's very difficult to repeat that using the filter in Instagram. What you can do now is you can use these profiles in place of the filters on Instagram. And you can then share that to Instagram. Somebody comments on it and says, this is a beautiful photo. I want to pay you a million dollars to hang it on my wall. And you can say, yeah, no problem. Let me send it to the printer for you because you have that profile now set not only in Lightroom Mobile, but in Lightroom on your desktop. So when you send that out to your printer, it's going to look just like it did when you shared it to Instagram. So it's a very helpful and beneficial thing to use these profiles. Now, that's just one scenario there using Instagram as an example. And I think the most important scenario to think of is, again, creating that strong foundation. So Hopefully when you are behind your camera, composing your image, you're thinking somewhat of what you want that final image to look like. So the first step is to, in your camera's viewfinder, set up the composition, how you want it to look, click that shutter, and then when you import it into Lightroom, you can now go to these profiles and say, okay, you know what, this right here, this is how I want it to look. I want it to have this appearance. And when you look at this profile, you can say, yeah, I do, but you know what? Some of this is pretty strong, but this is a good place to start. So now, if you set that profile, you can say it's very close to how I want it to look. 
Well, you can come in here and you can say, what? I want the exposure to be up just a little bit. I want those highlights to be down a little bit as well. And you know, maybe bring those shadows up. And yeah, just bring that exposure down a little bit. Contrast down. There we go. That's exactly how I want it to look. Well, very, very quickly now, because of the use of that profile, you can get to your final image very quickly and very efficiently. So in this situation, I think this image looks pretty good. Um, I used a very quick profile selection. I left the amount at 100, um, and that's fine for me. Now, again, once you have the profile set at any point in time, you can adjust the amount of that profile, and all of the adjustments that you have made will stay in place. And you can even go through and you can change your different profiles right in here. Um, and then you can select browse from there if you wanted to do that, or you could just click that little grid that you see right here. I think it's easier to just click that grid. But again, you can see how quickly, once you have that strong foundation, you can make a very quality image. So we'll just take a look at the before and the after of this image. So you can see here the before, this is just with the Adobe standard profile. All right, it looks pretty good, all right? It's not that bad. But then you can see once we add that profile and you saw how quickly I did that, how it just adds a little bit of depth to this image, makes it pop a little bit more and looks to me quite a bit better. So that's how these profiles can be amazingly beneficial. There is, however, more. These profiles, while powerful, what I think their true, the, the true kind of hidden genius of these profiles are the black and white profiles. Now, Lightroom had long been taking knocks for not being able to create good black and white images. These profiles completely change that. You now have preloaded 17 different black and white profiles. And again, these profiles are just going to be your starting points. So where before you may have used a different software program to create a compelling black and white image, well, you don't really have to do that anymore. Now, we kind of proved that you don't have to do that anyway in that previous tutorial that, that we shared in showing you how to create a black and white image in Lightroom. But what this does is it makes creating a black and white image much easier. Now, again, all you're going to be doing is just selecting one of these black and white profiles, and then that's going to be your starting point. So we'll say I like this blue, uh, this B&W blue filter here, so I'll select that, I'll close it, and then I can just go ahead and adjust everything else how I see fit. And you can just really give it quite a bit of pop, and you can, of course, continue to go in and create, you know, just a multitude of different things here. So you can put down a radio filter. Um, if I wanted to accent this path a little bit, I could do that. But that's going to be better done with a brush. So we'll select a brush. And I'll lay down a brush here to kind of accent this this path that's going through my image to draw the eye through the image here to the back. And you can see that rather quickly here, we can create a very strong and compelling black and white image. Now this may be not something that I would actually do. I'm just kind of giving you an example here. So there you go, guys. There's profiles in a nutshell. They are powerful. They are very useful. Uh, I strongly encourage you to explore them more. Try to start using them on your images um, from the start. So before you do any adjustments to your images, try putting a profile on it to give you that good foundation, that good starting point. And we'll end this tutorial here. Hopefully in a future tutorial, I will be able to show you how to create your very own profile. So stay tuned for that. But until next time, guys, have fun and happy Lightrooming.